pure black oil. <laughs> I got called out here to this job about two days ago. Another plumbing company come out here and said that the pump was trapped in the well and there wasn't nothing they could do for them to call me. So I told them I had to give me a day. I fit him in this morning. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and just see what we find. <clears throat> yep, definitely looks like somebody's been in it. Wow, it's a deep one, probably 400 foot. Just basing it on the metal well seal and basing it on the brass 90. He said that he tried to pour chlorine down the well. You can tell just by how rusted it is that he's been putting chlorine in this thing quite often. Quite often. And he said when he poured it down there, he saw sparks and flames shoot down below. So there's no telling what was going on. Maybe he's got a rubbed wire. Maybe too much chlorine ate through the jacket. I don't know. But we're going to come over here and try and grab a hold to it and pull it up. All right, before I attempt to dismantle the wellhead and believe everything that the other plumber had told me, I decided I was going to come under here and look at the tank. I believe the tank might be bad, and I didn't bring one with me, but I can always come back. <clears throat> but the first thing that I see, if we look right there, contacts are burned up. Let's go ahead and open this, show you some burned contacts. You see how cooked those things are right there? Come over here to this side, those look somewhat decent. Those look pretty much fried. So, probably a bad tank possibly killed a pump. Um, but we need to address a little bit of everything here. I'll probably turn it on, test it, see if it kicks the breaker. Um, just see what happens. But, um, we know that this is a problem. I believe the tank might be bad. I'm not sure there. Let's go ahead and just see if she's got any air pressure in it. Yeah, but she had a little bit of water come out of her too. And then I see there's a pretty big filter back here. So... They're doing a whole lot of stuff here. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> okay. I've got the power on right now. It's reading like a tenth of an amp. Remember he said something about it is sparked. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and check voltage. See if we got at least 240 out here. If we do, then the pump's not running. So either the pump's bad or the wire going down the well is bad. Probably a bad wire <clears throat> due to a failed pump or due to a failed tank. Tank dies, short cycles the pump. Pump kicks on and off so frequently that it rubs the wire jacket off, exposing the copper. Okay, back at the tank. Hope this don't pop on me. Nothing. All right, let's check voltage real quick. All right, 240. Come over here. And 240. So we know we've got power going out there. <clears throat> now we just need to disconnect the wires out at the well and make sure we have solid power going out there. We, we, we know that like the line in the ground between the house and the well isn't broken. Well, I've got solid power out here, so I don't really uh, have no other alternative than to lift the well seal up. So I've got this little strap right here wrapped around the brass neck, and we're going to go ahead and pick this thing up and just see if the well truly is collapsed, caved in, or just dry, or, or what. But, um... I don't think it's dry. I actually got it to wiggle. So maybe when the plumber came here the other day, it was dry. And then now it's been two days, the well is recovered. We'll see. Well, I do believe it was stuck. I just literally just pulled up on it. I watched it kind of pop. I didn't know. I was waiting to get out of the machine to see. Oh, yeah, she's free. She's free. I emptied it all out on myself. <laughs> It don't feel deep, but boy, oh boy, does it look like it is. Do we get a wire depth on this thing? 
984 foot, so shit. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can find a tag on this thing somewhere. I need to get some gloves. Well, I am a one man pump crew today. So this is what we've got. We're gonna pull it out with the excavator over the wheels. We're gonna go between the, uh, I guess it's like a pin oak in the woods. We're gonna go all the way down to the driveway. At, at, at least this thing's probably in 180. At the most, it could be in 400. Um, I'm just looking at the, the thickness of the casing, the metal well seal, the brass 90, and the 900 and some foot says on the wire. Homeowner does not know any information about how deep the well is. I just assumed other guys felt like it was deep and they didn't want to mess with it. And I don't see any tag down in here. I don't know what that is. So we don't know how deep it is. I hate that. I really needed another helper with me today so he could hold a flashlight in the well and look for the pump coming up. That just means I gotta go like 30 feet and walk back and forth until I get this thing out. Because believe it or not, it's like 92 degrees out here. I'm just lucky that I'm in the shade. I've got about 45 feet out so far. And when I pulled it out, I noticed this. That's probably our culprit right there. That's probably our culprit. Somebody extended the pipe. And instead of keeping the wire on the opposite side of the damn clamps. Oh, wow. Look, 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 look. There's the blowout. There's the blowout. We may not even have to pull this thing out anymore. Yep. Let's see how heavy this is. It's not bad. I think the smartest thing to do would be come out with it. Okay. I could go the cheap route and just fix that and put it back in. Um, but right now we already know that the, uh, the tank is bad. We know the wire is bad. So there could be a need to pull it out the pump could be bad and it shorted out and it blew that uh blew that splice but most likely is that splice was above the water level and when he poured the chlorine in there it kind of just ate away and dissolved that splice but it definitely shorted that thing to ground because all of them are cooked he said he saw sparks shooting down in the well so that makes sense all right i'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing out the rest of the way Looks like I'm about 160 foot out right now. I just keep going back every 30 foot, looking down in the well. This well makes a lot of manganese. You can see all the manganese that's on the pipe. This is black stuff. That stuff's pretty, pretty nasty. Um, maybe it had, they had extended it and put the pump on the bottom and the pump was silted in and all this stuff but good lord look at it that thing is caked boy this thing is gonna need some love all right let's see here nope all right looks like we keep pulling yikes i'm glad i'm pulling this out may be beneficial for it well, that was a little time consuming and a little bit dirty, but um, I got it out. I went ahead, I guess I pulled about 180 out uh, with the excavator, and then I just pulled this extra little bit by hand, and then it and the, and the uh, pump came out. So that's pretty good. Oh, I can't believe two guys couldn't get this out. I mean, it looks rough. And it may have been stuck in the mud. I'm not sure. But I need to measure the well. And I need to measure the full distance of the pipe to see. Just to see if maybe they put it on the bottom. But from what I was told by the homeowner. Was this was the original pump. So I don't know if uh, I find any bad spots. Golly, that's a whole lot, whole lot of manganese, man. This well is going to make black grit for the next two weeks when I put this pump back in. Sheesh. Okay, so I went ahead, pulled the pump line straight, and I measured it with my wheel. I got 235 feet, 
which kind of makes sense. That's that's where a well could end around 235, 240. And that's what we got for well depth, 237. So where they had extended it at the top near the well seal, looks like they extended it like 15 foot. That was where the wire blew out and that's where the splice is on the pipe. They extended it that depth and then they set the pump on the bottom. So the pump was on the bottom and the pump was silted in inside of all this manganese. So that was the main issue here. Somebody had come here to try to get more storage out of this well and they set the pump on the bottom, which is never a good idea. Um, even 15 foot off the bottom is risky. That's why they're gonna be getting so much sediment. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go up there where they extended it that 15 foot i'm gonna cut it off because there's no need to put a brand new pump back on the bottom of a hole again um you know 15 foot of water is only we're only talking 20 gallons so that's all it's going to cut him off i'm going to walk down it get my hands really mucky and inspect this wire really carefully that pump's going to be taken off we're going to put a brand new pump on it since we've did all this work that pump's already like 16 17 years old I don't know if it still works, but for the amount of effort and labor that we've already got here today, let's just put a new pump on it. He'll be good to go because we know he needs a new tank. So the tank's bad. More than likely, the pump went bad, and that's what blew the wire splice out. So rather than sitting out here in 95 degree heat and diagnosing all this crap and putting used stuff back in the well, we're going to go ahead, put a brand new pump in the well. I'll come back later and put, in, put a, uh, a tank under the house, but for right now, we're gonna cut 15 foot off the pipe. We're gonna to try to save the pipe and the wire as long as the wire looks good. I'll clean up this section and then I'll take the 30 minute journey and inspect the wire very carefully and we'll put this pump on. Lots to do. Okay, so we're gonna do away with this rusted piece of crap. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. All they did was extend it 15 foot and put it on the bottom. So that was the whole issue all along. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the pipe here and then we'll cut the wire up here where it's bad and that'll give us enough wire above the well seal and we'll put the well seal back here where it originally was. There's no need to extend the system 15 feet. You're not gaining anything out of it. And because they did that, that's why I'm here now. That's why the pump was stuck. Stuck it on the bottom. Okay. Ah, it's hot. I'm not filming any of the process of me like putting the pump together and the well seal and all that. It's just too, too damn high. You see the sweat dripping off my nose right now. But um, I'm going to show you. I've got the pump and the well seal all set. Pretty much ready to go back in. That's all done. I cleaned it up best I could with the gloves that I had. I actually went all the way down the pipe trying to squeegee a lot of that manganese off of it. And then I got the new well seal here. There's no need for a metal well seal. It's only in there at this point like 215 foot. So we're just going to hang it on an ABS well seal and a brand new brass elbow. Because the other one looked pretty, uh, pretty sad shape. But I'm going to go ahead now. We'll put the wheels on the well. God, look at that. That is just pitiful. We'll go ahead and toss it in there. I'm not going to put chlorine in it because when I got here, I could smell the chlorine. He had put chlorine in there, and that is when the system sparked and arced and everything happened. Um, so I can actually still smell it all over this stuff. So I'm going to get the pump in the well, hook the wires up, and then we're just going to pump it out in the yard for a little while. Hooey! You know, sometimes it's fun working alone, and then other times you just really need that second person. You, you gotta end up doing all the work, all the carrying, everything. And then, especially when you're like pulling it out, you need somebody in there looking with a flashlight so you don't break the pump off. So it becomes very tedious and time consuming to walk back and forth. I know you say, oh, why didn't you bring your pump puller? I was told that the well was collapsed and the pump was stuck. So the first thing I'm going to bring is my excavator, then my crane. I came out here with a camera today. My, my initial you know, goal was to lift it up, camera the well, 
figure out why you know the pump was stuck and then you know I pulled it up 18 inches and here we are good lord have mercy it's probably a 50 foot static level that's probably the uh, the issue here static level so deep and the wells not deep enough that well needs to be about 345 feet deep and that pump needs to be at 300 that would probably give them a lot better reserve to work with but doesn't look like we drilled this well and I don't remember doing this um, I believe that pump is like an 06 model is what I read on it maybe maybe wrong but um all right I'm gonna go ahead now wire this up and we'll kick on the breaker let it run for a little while evacuate all the all the crud and then we'll go under the house and put on a new pressure switch for right now and then I'll have to come back at a later date and put in a new bladder tank but first I need to cover this part of the bill with the homeowner make sure he's okay with this and then I can do the tank job separately at a later date but we probably will we'll definitely change out the switch and we'll probably add air to the tank just to get him by for the next few days and then we'll come out here and address that one thing at a time all right we got this all set all we got to do now is pick up our tools and turn the power on now just for context today falls in about day 14 of when I first tested positive for COVID I'm gonna say day 12 maybe a day or two ago I started feeling well enough to where I could function with cognitive abilities I tell you um, that stuff messes with your train of thought you just can't focus and even right now doing what I'm doing I, I am not working nowhere near as fast as I typically do maybe it's due to the heat but I know it's not I know it's due to COVID like you've got this spot in your brain where it just won't fire crazy cool all right let's kick it let's go see the well i'm supposed to be out drilling a well right now sent dad and mike they're out cutting the hole and it's not good i don't see hey oh yeah look at that gross pure black oil <laughs> my god that's a thumbnail right there That is crazy, dude. See, so what's ironic is, this is manganese. I actually have the same problem with the well at my house. I didn't drill the well at my house. So, but I have lined it, and I have put big conditioning systems on it, and big filters on it. Very similar to this house. It's got a, a big 20 by four filter, and then a water softener. Which, the 20 by four uh, big blues, the, the sediment filters, they actually do a really good job with this stuff. It's starting to clear up. It's got heavy chunks in it. I'm let this flow for about 15 minutes. Yeah, I knew it was going to be bad. But it's already starting to clear up. Alright, I'm going to try to scoop some water and clean up this mess and start toting some stuff back to my truck. Okay, well we're finally back under here. I got the power off. We can go ahead and take this pressure switch off, replace it because we know she's burnt. And we're going to air up the tank and see if we can push out some of the trapped water out of the bladder. Because I can tell that she's full of water and she shouldn't be. So it may be I get lucky and add air and it pushes out all of the trash. Godly, this stuff is pretty gross. Okay, and then we'll come up here and we'll turn this off, that way the house doesn't back feed. Okay, now that strictly should be emptying the water in the tank itself, because it's either I do this or take the switch off and then it's going to be giving me all the water there anyway, so all right, let me go ahead and take this off. All right, new pressure switch installed, that's a 4060. The air pressure in the tank was low, so I went ahead and got my air compressor, and I come over here and I aired it up. 37 and a half. 
so we're good there the tank is waterlogged but i was able to put air in it so that's a good sign it'll give me a little bit of a cushion to allow the system to operate correctly for at least a week so if you ever have a bad tank and it sounds like it's full of water then it's bad if it if it's easy to move like this one you can't move it it's dead it's like dead solid so there's not much of an air pocket in there helping to push the water out so the first thing you'll notice is a low water pressure and then the system will cycle very very frequently and and it basically when it cycles because the tank is bad these contacts are just oh look at that <laughs> these contacts will just sit here and flick and flick and flick and flick and flick and it'll make the pump run on and off on and off on and off and it ends up either killing the pump or killing the wire so it's a cascading effect the bad tank it's either going to kill the switch or it's going to kill the wire or it's going to kill the pump in this situation it killed the wire possibly it killed the pump and then the pump pulled 20 amps and then the pump shorted out the wire that, that almost seems more more likely but uh, i'm going to go ahead plumb up the wellhead and turn the system back on cool okay we'll go ahead and grab this put this back against this side that's really the only thing that really needs a little bit of freeze protection take this that's all we got to work with so okay that's good i'm gonna go ahead and put the uh put the lid on it and we'll go kick the breaker on deal okay now I need to find an outdoor spigot and make sure everything's running look at this crazy mess it don't do me no good does it god they got that on there super tight probably feeds his uh his shed out there. Sweet. Oh, I can wash my hands now. Thank God. Good old manganese. Turn your hands a brownish color. Not too bad one man pump change out with the help of the excavator but we got it all up and running I gotta go ahead and load this thing back up and get it all strapped down and uh, head to the job site kind of messed up his driveway a little bit here looks good good deal like to leave everything as pretty as I can when I leave. Woo! Knock that out in two hours and 15 minutes to the dot. I got here exactly at 10 o'clock and it is 12.15. That ain't bad for a pump change out by yourself. Man, air conditioning in this truck feels good right now. Feels great. But most instances, like this I would go ahead and replace the bladder tank the reason I'm not doing it is number one I don't have one number two it was not part of the original contract he wanted me to come out here get a stuck well pump unstuck pull it out and fix the problem so that's what we did got the well pump unstuck figured out what the culprit was they had set the pump on literally on the bottom so we pulled the pump up roughly 20 feet, put a new well seal on it, put a new pump on it, system runs fine. New new pressure switch, so, and we have the bladder tank, even though it is faulty, we have that aired up to 38 PSI now. The system operates in about a 20 second cycle time, which really ain't that bad, but the air that I put in the tank today will probably be gone in the next 10 days. It's probably gonna leak out over time, so. Once he pays me for this portion of the bill, 
I'll be back here to put in a tank. So make sure y'all give the video a thumbs up. If you learned something, drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.